tuning in to Cooking with the Eye and the Today we're going to be making one of the most celebrated staples of Italian cuisine, pasta. This fresh pasta dough recipe is easier than you might think. It requires only a handful of ingredients, can be transformed into all your favorite pasta dishes, and it's a great activity to do with kids. But before we get started, let's talk a little bit about this iconic food for which Italy is so famous. Contrary to popular belief, there isn't a single preparation of pasta that you find throughout Italy. Pesto, for instance, originates in Liguria. Carbonara is from Rome, and the hearty Bolognese, you guessed it, is from Bologna. The names and appearance of pasta also differ dramatically from region to region and from place to place. Italy has more than 400 different pasta shapes. The wide tubes known as pacari come from Campania. Orecchiette, which means little ears, is one of the varieties from Puglia. And pizzoccheri, a darker in color buckwheat flour based pasta, is from Lombardia. Many of us were taught that Venetian explorer Marco Polo introduced pasta to Italy during the late 13th century following his voyages to Asia. This is a misconception, however. Pasta was in fact consumed in the Italian peninsula as early as the 4th century BC. Lagane, a wide ribbon-shaped pasta, is one of the oldest known pasta varieties dating to ancient Rome. The name comes from the archaic Greek term for kitchen pot. If the word and the pasta's description sound familiar, you are correct. Lagane is an early cousin to the type of pasta we use to make lasagna. For this pasta dough recipe, all you need are four simple ingredients, flour, eggs, olive oil, and salt. You'll also want to have a rolling pin handy and be willing to use a little bit of your physical strength to create a truly delicious product. A pasta machine or a stand mixer with a pasta attachment will also come in handy. For this recipe, I'm using a combination of double zero flour and semolina flour. Uh, double zero or doppio zero flour is a fine milled flour that contains less gluten than common flour. Semolina is coarser than all-purpose flour and it's made from uh, durum wheat. This will make a pasta that is silky but also capable of standing up to the uh, more hearty ragus. Let's talk about eggs. Italian culinary philosophy emphasizes quality and locally sourced seasonal ingredients. These are fresh, humanely raised eggs from one of our local farmers markets. I'm also using real Italian olive oil from an organic family owned farm in Sicily. Okay, so we're going to start with about two and a half cups of double zero flour. And you'll place it on your nice clean surface. And then we're going to also add one and a half cups of semolina flour and a generous pinch of salt. Now we're just going to sift these ingredients together. Now we're going to make a well in the middle of our flour mixture. Then we're going to take seven large eggs and crack them into the well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lightly beat the eggs and we're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. Now we're going to gradually start incorporating the surrounding flour, but be careful not to break your well, okay? Otherwise you're gonna have your eggs running all over the place. Now, if you're thinking, whoa, this looks like a giant mess, you could also use a bowl for this step. Uh, you could do it in a stand mixer, or you could place all these ingredients in a food processor and pulse for about 20 seconds. If you notice, what's forming is kind of a shaggy looking dough. Once you get comfortable with the recipe, you could also incorporate other ingredients, such as beet or spinach puree or squid ink, 
For those of us who spend way too much time working on computers, myself included, uh, kneading dough is actually a great way to stretch your wrists. It's also a fantastic way to build upper arm strength. You might have people stopping you on the street to ask, uh, hey, are you uh, working out, doing Pilates? No, it's just the pasta. After 10 minutes of kneading, your dough will look like this. It will be uniform, smooth, and almost a little bit glossy. Now what you're going to do is wrap your dough in plastic and put it in the refrigerator to rest for about an hour. If you are using a rolling pin to shape your pasta, divide the dough into four equal parts. Roll out the dough on a floured surface to create a nice long oval shape. Keep rolling until it's thin enough that you can almost see the outline of your hand through it. Now, if you wanted to make ravioli or lasagna, you could simply cut uh, the dough into the size sheet that you would like, as such. If you are going to be using a pasta machine or a stand mixer with the pasta attachment, what you're going to do is lightly flour your dough and flatten it just a little bit so that it can um, fit through the rollers. And then you're going to kind of feed it through the attachment. Once you have fed it through once, you're going to fold the dough in half and feed it through again. And then what you're going to do is adjust to the lower setting and feed the dough through again. If you wanted to make papardelle or something similar, uh, all you would do is cut your pasta into uniformly sized ribbons. To make fettuccine, what you're going to do is take one of your sheets of dough and then simply run it through the pasta machine or the stand mixer with attachments. Now, if you wanted to try making something a little bit more creative or artigianale, you could make garganelli. For garganelli, what you're going to need is a little gnocchi board like this. And what you're going to do is cut your dough into two inch by two inch squares. And you're going to take one of the squares, place it on the gnocchi board with the point facing out, grab your dowel, and then wrap the point of the dough around the dowel, pressing as you roll and then simply slide the garganello off the dowel. Your uncooked pasta dough will keep for about two days in the refrigerator. You can also freeze the dough. Remember to cook your pasta in abundantly salted water. The water should be salty like the Mediterranean. Also, you'll want to remember that fresh pasta requires a fraction of the cooking time as dry pasta. The total amount of time needed to cook fresh pasta is only between one and three minutes for a nice al dente pasta. Is there any other kinds? Remember, never ever rinse your pasta after cooking it. It's an Italian culinary no-no. If you rinse your pasta, it will remove all the wonderful starch that helps your sauce adhere to the pasta. Thank you again for tuning in to Cooking with the IMLA. We hope that you'll send us images of your final product. Uh, we also welcome your questions and suggestions for future segments. Ciao, a presto.